Hi everybody, today I am reading chapter two of Revenge of the Living Dummy by R.L. Stein. And I'm doing this with the kind permission of Scholastic Incorporated. Two weeks earlier, I had other things on my mind. I wasn't thinking about the old graveyard down the street. I had other problems. Well, one big problem, and his name was Ethan. Ethan is my cousin, and it isn't nice to hate your cousin. So let's just say he's not one of my favorite people on the planet. I like to make lists. And if I made a list of my top 5,000 favorite people in the world, my cousin Ethan wouldn't be on it. Get what I'm saying? It was almost dinner time on a Friday night, and I was perched on the edge of my bed in my new bedroom. Why did I have a new bedroom? Because mom and dad kicked me out of my awesome room in the attic to make room for, you guessed it, Ethan. So now I had to sleep in mom's sewing room and the sewing machine was still against the wall. So how much room did I have? Not much. I was talking on my cell to Molly. Molly is maybe the only person who understands what a pain Ethan is because she's met him and she had two bruises on her knees to prove it. Whoever told Ethan that kicking people is funny. Molly and I are like sisters. If you mention Molly Malloy, you have to mention me, Brittany Crosby. We're both 12 and we live on the same block and we've always been in the same class since third grade. We both like to draw and paint. We both like to make lists of everything. We're always finishing each other's sentences. Like we have one brain. Molly is a little taller than I and more into sports. We both have coppery hair, and although hers is lighter and curlier, we both have brown eyes. I'm the funny one. It's hard to make Molly laugh. I think she's more serious than me because her parents split up and she lives with her dad. He travels a lot and is kind of a flake. So she feels like she has to be the grown-up in the house. Obviously, I've thought a lot about this. I once made a list of my good qualities and my bad qualities. And one of my good qualities is that I really try to understand my friends. I can't come over now, I told Molly. That brat Ethan will be here any minute. Dad went to the bus station to pick him up. Molly groaned into the phone. Maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe he'll miss the bus. Why is he coming to stay anyway? His parents had to go away or something, I said. He's even going to come to our school. I think he's in third grade. He is such a sicko, Molly said. Maybe you should move over here until he goes. I rolled my eyes like my mom would go for that. She knows you hate him, Molly said. I'm supposed to feel sorry for Ethan because he's had such a tough life, I said. You know, his parents were both sick for a long time and they didn't pay any attention to him. Molly shook her head. Yeah, I remember, I groaned. So mom and dad say I have to take good care of him every 10 minutes. <sighs> they remind me I have to say, pay attention to him. Molly shook her head. Yeah. Hello, do they know he kicks people when grown-ups aren't looking? Do they know how he kept trying to trip you and make you fall down the stairs? Did you tell them he tricked you into eating a sandwich that had bugs in it? <sighs> He's totally bratty, but they don't believe me, I said. Last time Ethan stayed here, 
he started missing, messing with my computer and he deleted my whole term paper. He said it was an accident. Then he burst out laughing. Molly groaned again. What a creep. Molly, what am I going to do? I wailed. He's coming to live with us for weeks. Molly was silent for a moment. And then she said softly, Face it, Brittany, your life is over. Oh! I let out a cry as I heard a deafening crash from downstairs. I nearly dropped the phone. Was Ethan here already?